Hey, Senda. Hey, Phil. Do you uh, want to talk about some characters or some campaigns that like you worked on, but like you really never got to play? Yeah. Oh, it's like it's like the notebook of things you never got. <laughs> just, 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 just out of reach. <laughs> Q music. And welcome to another fine episode of Pandas Talking Games. I'm your host, Phil. And I am your other host, Senda. And on tonight's episode, we have a question from Andrew Dacey on the Misdirected Mark Slack room. Um, and Andrew said, hey, Phil and Senda, um, I had a possible pandas topic. Can you talk about characters that you never had the chance to explore your concept for them fully? I'm sort of calling this the unrequited character concept. Like you come up with a cool character and some nice meat in their backstory, but the campaign fizzled a cu couple of sessions in. Or the one I've had happen a few times is where I'll be playing a one shot and just have so much more that I would like to do with that character. Dig. Saw this pop up and I was like, we can do this topic. <laughs> Boy, you want us to wax, po wax poetic about gaming stories? Okay. <laughs> we really don't have any definitions for tonight, but I wanted to unpack what uh, what Andrew asked in terms of what we're going to be talking about tonight. So we're gonna we're gonna expand just a little bit past Andrew's original question, take it beyond just characters, but also include campaigns because sometimes this happens to GMs too where a GM has a great idea for a campaign, but never really gets like either doesn't get it to the table because something happens or kind of gets it to the table, but it fizzles out early. Um, so it's the exact same thing, but I didn't want it to be just um, player centric. I wanted it to be um, for both. So yeah. this happens. Um, it's happened to me a bunch of times over my career as a, as a GM. And um, really the key is that for what we're talking about tonight is that, you got to work on the character of the campaign. So there was like an initial interest. People wanted to do it. You started working on it. Then something happens. We're we'll put a big question mark right there. Yep. And then the game never continues. Yes. Right. And then like you wind up going on to play something else or run something else or whatever. And so yeah. there's a couple things that could happen right in that big question mark. Um, the first one and probably the most um, notorious of them all is um, scheduling problems. Yeah. Right? So, so you're scheduled to play and um, like you've got everything set, you're scheduled to play and then something happens and you can't play on that, that night. So you're like, no big deal. We'll play the next time. But then something else happens and you can't play that night. And then like you just like everybody kind of loses interest, like whatever interest there was when you started with these kind of failed attempts, like that interest is fizzled out. I feel like you have a game that's getting close to this oh, right now. It's oh, my, my, uh, my sprawl game has had. Uh, it's cursed to be clear. Three failed attempts in a row. Yeah. Um, that is normally just the death knell for yeah. a game, right? Like after three failed attempts, it's like, well, I guess it's just not in the stars. We're not playing this game. We'll talk about that. I actually didn't put that on my list for tonight, but that is absolutely something that's happened. Um, yeah. Another thing that could happen um, besides scheduling issues, right? So scheduling issues is a case where somebody can't make it to the game and you're kicking the game off, right? Or the game's in an early place. So like you may, depending on how your game's structured, you may not be able to absorb not having someone there. Yeah. Right? Some games do, some games don't. Depends um, on the game, yeah. The other one is like some sort of long delay occurs from the time that you made your character to the time the game gets started. Now, where schedule is like somebody couldn't make it, Long delay is like something like we were going to play this great face-to-face -face game, then pandemic. Then pandemic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or 
Um, and there was a panini. <laughs> right. Or, you know, we were going to, uh, we were going to do this thing, but then, um, you know, then like summer vacations came up or I made this character and the semester ended and we all went home. Yep. Right. And then when we come back the new semester, like people aren't as interested in playing that or want to play something else. Um, so like long delays can, can be a killer to this thing. Uh, and the other one is the new shiny, right? Like you're working on getting ready to play this game, but wham out of the blue was off your radar. Some game that you've been dying to play or product that you've been dying to like, you know, jump into shows up on the market and you're like, hold everything. <laughs> wham, bam, Alakazam, wonderful you came by. Like that. Exactly like that. <laughs> uh, that has happened to me. The, um, in fact, a combination of those two, the long delay and something new, um, is how, um, how my players feared my every trip to Gen Con. <laughs> because Cause there would be a long delay because you were gone and you would be exposed to all the new shiny things. And I would always come home from Gen Con with like five, you know, like a stack of books, all new and be like, oh my God, these are the greatest games ever. We got to play these. Let's get them to the table right now. Right? Like no self-control. I mean, um, it's so funny because I run short campaigns mostly with my group. We play and run short campaigns because sure. it's easier to cycle people in and out and people's schedules get busy and stuff. Um, so it is really funny because we, because all the games are shorter, I don't feel like I have as many like lost pet campaigns because I don't run into um, like the something new as often because we always, we're always ending to do the something new, but the long delay is dangerous. That one is bad. Yeah. Yeah. The, the long delay is, um, oh my God, it, it is. The long delay is a killer. Um, and, and really what all of this is coming down to, um, especially with schedule and long delay, is is the is killing momentum. Yes. Right? There is a momentum yes. you get. Like when you start, a, like when everybody comes together and you agree on a new idea for a game and you all kind of brainstorm up your characters and you start working on them, there is like an excitement, right? Like, oh, like this yeah. is great. We're starting something new and I really dig this character concept. And your you know, creativity is just up and spinning and world building and character building and you're making relationships and you're like figuring out how everything works and what cool, you know, quirky things are going to happen as you play this game and everything yeah right and so that momentum if your first session starts when it's supposed to that momentum just carries into the first session and if the first session's good you start building up the flow right and like you get into yeah. the game and you'll get past session four and like the game will take off but if you've like then but like if you've done all the prep work and the creativity is at its high and then all of a sudden the you day stop. of the game <laughs> Nobody can, like, somebody can't make it or a couple of people can't make it. Huh? it like, it, 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 like, it just starts to sputter. And maybe if you can get that game done by the next, you know, the next session, it's okay. But if you have another delay, like, maybe mm -hmm. you were supposed to get a session in before Gen Con, right? Mm -hmm. So you were supposed to get the session in, but then you didn't. So then now it's no game for this, this period of time. And we have to skip over Gen Con and, and then look, where are you? Right. That momentum yeah. just, woo, do, 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 right. Runs out. Well, okay. what actually, what actually happens is then you're all flipping back through your notes going, um, I don't remember. What did we, yeah, well, what's your name? Like, what, I guess what this, are we, right. I guess this, this sounds interesting. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or maybe I make What's another one. What's our relationship? One. Right. Like. I'm not a cat yeah. person yet. Right. Like, like that idea, I have. right? I have. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> okay. So with that idea, because I, I, you know, I love, I love, Dan I, I love Andrew's question. I want to actually get to the part where we talk about characters and stuff. But what I really wanted to do was kind of unpack a little bit of this talking about like, what are those killers? Like the, that importance of that initial momentum. Having yeah. done that. Yeah. Senda, tell me about a character that um, you had made, but really never got to like develop fully. In yeah. The course of the game. So this is this is again a little bit funny, just because um, I play a lot of short campaigns now, um, but um, they tend to be very focused on evolution of character which is super satisfying to me right so so i reached back right because there is that character that was like 
boy, I think she was the second or third character I ever made. And I actually tried to bring her into games multiple times because I never felt like I kind of got to play out the arc that I wanted for her. And part of that may be that I was trying to play her in 3.5 and maybe that wasn't the game for her, right? Um, you know, in retrospect. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so this is everything that I say from here on out is going to shock you because this is the character that like crystallized all of this stuff for me. <laughs> Right? I can already so, picture this character. Bear with Go me, ahead. right? Because my first character is a Kender. So um, this character, her name was Maria Mea. She was an elf, um, and she was a rogue, and she carried a rapier, um, all of which is sort of like whatever. Um, the really interesting part to me was that um, I, I was exploring sort of the matrix of alignments, right? And had like a big long conversation about like, um, especially at the time, like how do you play a true neutral character um, who's actually like neutral um, on on both axes, right? Like that's actually kind of hard because like as just actual humans, I don't think it's easy for us to just fall on that line. Um, and what I basically came up with is that she was really traumatized. <laughs> This is shocking for an old, like, second or third D&D character, right? She was, like, traumatized. I don't remember exactly what happened, but she, like, got kicked out of her home. So, like, she she officially by birth had claim to some, you know, estate or something. But she um, had been uh, ostracized and, like, struck from the records. Um, and so she basically made her decisions um, by pulling cards from a deck of cards. So when she came to a decision point and she was like, hmm, I don't know what to decide, she would just pull a card um, and then based on if it was like a, a red card or a black card or if she decided to interpret, you know, hearts, <laughs> clubs, whatever, in a specific way, um, then she would just basically like do what the card said. So essentially she was true neutral in that she declined to make any moral decisions because she was pretending she didn't care and she let the cards choose for her. So... From a more recent perspective, what's interesting to me about this character still um, that I don't think I really got to explore would be her relationship with the cards, um, her relationship with her past and like that whole like traumatic sequence. Like I would love to play getting thrown back into that nonsense, right? Like not being able to avoid that city or wherever it was. Um, But then the other part of it being like um, evolving to admit that she still cares because I think part of the reason she was attractive to me as a character was like, as a college student, I was like, Oh, how cool to be someone who just really doesn't care from a more adult perspective. I feel more like she is the kind of character who does care, but is too scared or too traumatized to admit that she cares because caring about things is how she loses things. Right. So, um, her journey of evolution from, not letting herself care or admit that she cares about anything back into like caring, um, I think would be a cool progression, right? And she was like super kick ass with her rapier. Like she specific, she had like a plus five dexterity or something. <laughs> like, right? like I rolled all of the best things for her dexterity. And um, so, uh, so she was also just like, she was, she was like partially based on the dread pirate Roberts, right? Like, which is like, of how course. do you, how do you not? Um, so like, there's just delightful bits of that, which are just he like, oh, I have really good rapier play, but all of these things to be said, like, I can think of many games that um, probably would have been more satisfying for her journey as I envisioned it when I created her um, than so, D&D at the time. Let me ask you a question. Did you actually yeah. have a deck of cards? I did at the yeah, table. Okay, good, yes. Good. I was, I, oh, I yes. assumed you did. I, I assumed you did, but I was like, I was like, this character concept requires like the player to actually have a deck of cards. Yeah, I would be like, ooh, these gems are kind of pretty, but like they seem to be sacred also. I kind of want to take them, but like maybe I shouldn't draw a card. Oh, I guess I'm taking them. Cool. Right? Like, <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. It's, it's yeah, uh, it was a, an element of just sheer chaos. Should we take the right hand side or the left hand side? I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, I yeah, take it. so. That was fun. It was it was just it was sheer chaos, but like 
fighting through to the part where I like uh, somewhere underneath she must still care. Like that's the part that's interesting to me now. And I got to, I only really got to play her for one or maybe two sessions into so that her, game. So her fate trouble aspect would be like chaos is my armor. Yeah, right? Like in fate, she would be really good. Or in dungeon world, she would also be very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Don't give away too much of the candy store yet, because we're going to be talking a little bit about that at the tail Ooh, end. Oh, sorry. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. Carry on. Yeah. Tell me about your I mean, this is part of the problem with this topic. Like, once you ask me, like, ask me about a character, right? I'm going to wax poetic. But Phil, tell me about your favorite character that you wish, you wish you had been able to play more and develop. Right. So, uh, and this will actually go to, um, let's go back to one of the other reasons that, um, like some of these character concepts concepts get lost. So years ago, um, years ago, Chris ran a um, Numenera game for us. He was really excited about it. It was Numenera was still fairly new, and um, we you know we we sat down um, and we like were working on character concepts. And I came up with this concept. I I wanted to be a glaive um, who fused. Um, metal to flesh. I think that's the exact term, but essentially cyborg, right? Yeah. Cy- Glaive being fighter and cyborg. I wanted to be a cyborg, um, cyborg fighter type. But I wanted to be like a Numenera paladin, right? Now there's like no paladins in Numenera, but Numenera yeah. is essentially a fantasy game with sci-fi, like yeah, sci-fi yeah. coloring. So I was like, I kind of want to be like a paladin type, like at least a knight slash paladin type of character but how's that how's that even happen right so the cyborg part was like cool fuses you know fuses metal to flesh like i am my armor right yeah. that's the first part <laughs> you are both yeah right so i wanted like i came up with this like idea i was like well all right well like how does like how does like any of that even matter um and so what i came up with was this um it got kind of away from me, like the background stuff got kind of away from me quickly, but it really got me super into the character, which was um, that there was this um, mountain and that up in the mountain, there was this temple and um, people who wanted to become these knights, knights of Psy, C-Y. If you wanted to become a knight of Psy, you had to, you had to take this um, journey up the mountain by yourself. You had to enter the temple of Psy. And if Psy found you worthy, you would be transformed into a knight. Now, the real part of this, right? That's how the character understood it. The real part of this is that the Temple of Psy is a AI run um, soldier um like soldier creation facility, right? Like it it was designed like almost Borg like to ingest humanoids and spit out combat cyborgs. Yeah. Right. But it's Numenera. So this thing's been like lost in the mountains forever and these people find it and then they just like make up a religion around it. Yeah. Right. And Psy being short for cyborg, right? Like, right. Um, so then like so then there's like a whole town that lives like at the bottom of this mountain and there's like this whole thing where people like you know there's like they don't let anyone just climb the mountain right so there's like you know trials that you have to go through to prove that you're an actually like worthy fighter like worthy to make the climb and all that stuff and uh and so yeah so like that like totally cemented the character idea for me and i loved it right like like he was a traveling knight and he was like honorable and he was like out there to protect people um but at the same time like he understood he understood numenera because he was like part numenera yeah himself right? yeah yeah exactly so um what happened um was that one of the players had dropped out of the game due to medical issues Yikes. Um, and it was just one of those things where when the player left, the game wasn't really sustainable. Yeah. I don't want to go into the whole reasons behind that, yeah, but no, it, there were reasons behind it. Not not the medical part, but the reasons why it wasn't sustainable. But it was a, it was a group decision. Like we all were like, yeah, we really can't play this without this player. Yeah. So um, we changed games and switched to Dungeon World, right. um, which is how we wound up playing this awesome campaign of Dungeon World. But I never... Like I, I never got rid of the itch to play that character so much so that one, 
I wrote a whole short story about that character um, climbing up the mountain and his like his trial to get to the Temple of Psy and to be found like and to be transformed, which I also never finished. Um, <laughs> sadly, it's mostly written, actually. Um, I just like I would actually have to dedicate some time to finish writing the ending or whatever. But then also when I went back and ran Numenera earlier in the pandemic, I, I actually used that town. I remember and, you mentioning the town and the temple from doing yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I actually have my own like little Numenera setting um, that kind of encompasses um, that whole thing. And that was like a, like for me, that was like a, um, for me, that was a character that I really wanted to explore because I really wanted to get into more about like, what was that um, temple's real purpose? Yeah. Like I had some theories and I even, even when I wrote it as a campaign setting, I never settled it down. Like, was it a Borg like invasion device? Like they dropped it, it tr- you know, transformed humanoids. Invading, yeah, right. invading or, army or was it a self-defense thing that like the city or whatever was being invaded and people like willingly went into it to be transformed into cyborgs to defend the, uh, to defend the town. I never really settled on that. And I'm really not sure I want to. Like, it's kind of the fun part of Numenera is really not, yeah, not knowing settling heavily on that. So it's really interesting that you, sorry, did you cover everything that you wanted to I say did. about it? I did. Thank you. Cool. It's really interesting that you um, actually mentioned going on to write a short story because it made me realize, um, like, we had a we had a, an aborted um, play by post game um, during the pandemic that just fell apart because reasons, right? Um, uh, but, but I was really liked my character and when really liked his character and we ended up going off and writing short stories about it together right uh, like, yeah also a <laughs> like thing we're going to talk like about several months so it was just really interesting that you mentioned the short story because it was it was funny to me because that character did not ping my list of characters i haven't gotten satisfaction from because i went off and like wrote about her <laughs> like months afterwards i'm like oh no i know everything about her now um but like in terms of in game like yeah barely touched it anyway really interesting anyway um why don't you tell me about a campaign that yeah. uh, that you wish you'd gotten more from so this one, actually, if you're a longtime listener of the show, you'll actually know this. Um, the campaign that I um, that we never really got to play that I really long to play is um, the one that we were developing for the show is like a little side AP of where you were going to play through the legacy weapon. Yeah. And you had this like really cool character and I had some like really cool ideas about the world that, you know, we were going to was- play in. It was neat. It was, I think, I think we fell apart on managing it in 15 minute segments. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We, we, it, it turned out to not be a good idea for an AP. Yeah. And then our schedules were such that like, we never really had the time where we could sit and play a half hour, 45 minutes of it yeah, as our own entertainment. Yeah. But I kind of feel like that's <laughs> we not could come dead. back to it. Like I we totally like- could come back to that one and just not record it or, 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 Hey folks, tell us if you want this, I'm going to say it. Oh, and no. then he's going to be like, Oh no. What if we recorded a bunch of it and put it on our Patreon? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm lukewarm to these ideas because I'm lukewarm to the ideas of monetizing my monetizing fun. That's fair. Um, but that said, um, I love our patrons and if you under the right circumstances, as in we just play this game. I'm not gonna edit it. <laughs> like like we play this game and it's not like a Sasky quality. I'm not gonna production. edit it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if people wanted to hear the raw game of us playing the game, which is the dice rolls, the lookups of rules and things like that, I would be I would be more inclined to do that because um while I appreciate highly edited APs, one, I don't want to subject you to that. And two, um, I don't want to make a thing. If we're going to do this, I want to play a game with you. And I'm okay if other people listen in on us playing a game. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to be like, oh, can we do that take again? Kind of like, I don't want to do oh, that yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, that's fine. All right, we, you know what? We, we might we'll hit the little more of this in the bamboo We'll talk about that off lounge. mics. But yeah. you know what? Y'all tell us if you're interested. How about that? 
Yeah. So for me, I thought that would like, that was one that I really wanted to explore because I did jot some notes and I'll have to go trace. I, I'm sure I know where I kept my notes for it, I don't but know I, I would I have to go have back and <laughs> I oh, might. I mean, we'll figure it out. We can figure it um, out again. Or start over, whatever. Like yeah. it'd be fine. I mean, it's been a couple of years. I mean, we're different yeah, really? gamers. We could come up with something. Remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you know, I loved. Um, I just loved. I loved that idea. Like, I I loved the. I still wanted to do the one on one because mm-hmm. I think that's really fun. Like, I think that's a really fun um, campaign model to explore. Um, I'm proud of the legacy weapon. I think it's a fun way to um, to address one on one play. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's brilliant, actually. Um, and I like hanging out and playing games with you. So, you know, Let's also a it. win. Let's do it. All right, you know, I don't, I don't want to play dates on this, but... That's fine. I foresee a time in the future where something like this would be very possible. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that was my campaign that got away from me. What about you? Um. So, the, the, again, like I said, I've been playing a lot of shark campaigns. So, like, the short enough that even when we lose momentum we still manage to power through because <laughs> there's only like one to two more sessions left right um so the last one that i had that really i wish it's really one where i wish i'd had more time um because what i ended up doing I, so i was running andy made a comment at some point that she was like i wish we could all escape to the circus and i was like we should play that as a game i think this was still pre geek right Um, and so we set up a game with several other folks, um, that was like, they were all circus performers in a circus and they were traveling from town to town in a circus. And, um, and, uh, and I think Andy was like the strong woman or something. Um, and they, uh, I don't, I frankly don't, don't, don't totally remember the plot, but, um, Andy's character in particular, um, had run away from their husband um, because they were so embarrassed that they had, um, quote, borrowed, unquote, and then promptly lost um, in gambling a bunch of money that was supposed to run their inn that was their shared property, right? And this money was for the inn to make it run. And they owed a debt to, like, basically the mafia. Um, And so they tried to go double that money by using the money to gamble and instead lost it all right so instead of going home she ran away (laughs) um and so there was like a bunch of other stuff happening and they were looking for a thing and blah 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 and like i had this thing in the back of my mind for forever that right like somehow her ex-husband was involved because of course he was right like you don't put an ex-husband that you ran away from into your backstory unless you and want not him, expect him to come back to come around. back yes so you know i i had this whole thing where like i was starting to tie him into the storyline and then unfortunately like we ended up losing like half a player's <laughs> and like everything kind of just disintegrated like scheduling and like social stuff happened and like it just kind of died on the vine right so i ended up running one more session with her and the one other person um just to kind of wrap it up and like smooshed ever all the rest of the plot in really hard and fast in ways that sort of made sense but sort of didn't because i didn't have time to like connect them all up and evolve them the way i had intended to um, but basically, like, got them back into the town where their ex-husband and, like, you know, made that drama happen. But I, the thing that I regret about it is, like, it really would have benefited from the time to breathe that it actually needed. Um, it was intended to run for probably, like, six to eight more sessions than that. Um, and it didn't. And so I don't feel like I got to really finish out or explore all of that stuff and how it connected. Now, I'm still really glad that I did jam in an ending because you will hear Andy talk about that to this day because I brought her ex-husband back in. (laughs) And it was really funny because at some point she, like, just as a world-building thing, came up with the name that he used to call her, like, the pet name. And so, like, they, like, sneak into the bad guy's lair and there's, like, you know... a a cloaked hooded figure and then he says her pet name <laughs> that's good <laughs> it that's was delightful good. she was like what um so like i got that moment but i didn't get all the lead up and all the tension that should have happened going into it 
Um, and I miss that. Like, it, it would have been really good. It would have been really good. Anyway. Yeah, it would have been, uh, you know, as a premise, if everybody was running away from something. Right? And that, that was the premise of the Oh, focus. okay, perfect. Everyone okay, was running perfect. away from someone because the whole purpose of the game was we're running away to join the circus. Let's make a game of that. And we came up with the name of the circus and everything, like all the characters. So they were all running from something. Um, Andy happened to be running from her ex-husband, <laughs> which, of course, to me, was a very intriguing backstory. I know I involved everybody else's backstories, too, but at this point in my life, I cannot for the life of me remember what they were. Um, so I everything can't imagine got tied why together. running away from your ex-husband was the was the was the ki- the concept that stuck in your head I so much. I can't imagine, except running away from, running away, from, not even her ex, running away from her estranged husband that she was still absolutely and utterly in love with well i guess there are some differences <laughs> it was more that it was like a romantic disaster right well that is fully in your wheelhouse. totally my wheelhouse so i stuck with that one anyway yes so i think that was that's the campaign that i'm like man if i'd been able to wrap that out the way that i really wanted to um yeah that would have been great <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this like one step further because now now you just got me brainstorming. Okay. So picture this like person who like shows up in your life at some point Uh and is like, like, look, I know everything's a disaster right now, but what if I told you that I could take you somewhere where you could do some good and all you have to do is just drop everything you're doing right now and come with me regardless of the consequences. And then like one by one recruits all the players into this like group oh, that, man. that is basically the circus, but also then like does other stuff. But every character has like, like dropped their life and left something behind that's chasing them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oof. I like that. hundred percent. I just 100% like would that. hundred percent would play that game. Sure. Fate. <laughs> sure. I Sounds good. Would, would Let's do this. it. All right. Well, cool. Because that brings us to the last part of this. Because we didn't want to just go and like wax poetically about our uh, about these characters and games, and not talk about maybe some ways that you could actually get to play them, either as they were originally created or in other ways. Yes. So we came up with like a little list of potential ways that you could kind of reprise these um, lost loves. Um, And I'll I'll do the simplest one, right? I'll just, I'll knock the simplest one right off the top, which is sometimes if you're just patient, you can get the game to come around again. Yes. Right? Like if you just, if you play the long game, right? And just go play something else for a little while. um, Maybe, with the same group, you can bring the game idea back around and people will be like, oh, yeah, we were going to play that. That was a good idea, right? Like, you may just have to wait for the stars to realign to reintroduce the game. Or perhaps your circumstances have changed and now you have a new group. Like, you moved or your player group changed over or whatever. And now you could just be like, you know what? I have this idea. And <laughs> Are like, you into it? <laughs> are you into it? And you may get a second shot at getting that game off the ground. What's another way? What's another one? Pick just you can pick anything you like from the list. What one that jumps out at you? Yeah, um, I'm gonna jump to this one. Write some fiction. <laughs> right. I'm jumping to this one because um, because I personally have done it a bunch over the course of the pandemic, um, which is pretty entertaining. So like straight up, um, you know, like I was saying, um, when and I took our characters. And they had a very strong relationship connection, um, which was really interesting to explore. Um, and just as a as a so as a side detail, because it was the relationship stuff that we chose from the the pages. But like we've played romantic characters in the past, but we we played a very strong will they won't they um, in Tales from the Loop. And then in this game, um, like. We ended up selecting relationship stuff on the character sheet that put us in a relationship again, but we didn't want to play Will They, Won't They again. So instead we played like fated to be like lovers forever, like fated soulmates kind of situation, right? Um, so this one was different in that we we knew that they would get together, but we didn't know how, right? Like it was going to happen eventually, but then there was going to be trials and tribulations. Um, so so it was really interesting from, from that perspective. So... Um, 
we ended up taking those and continuing to write about them. And then we were so taken with the bad guys that we created for them that we then went off and wrote about the bad guys. Yeah. Nice. Uh, by great. the way, how many pages, how many, how many pages slash words did you clock on that? <laughs> on the original characters, I think we clocked, hang on, probably about 300 pages in Google Docs. Um, no, 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 maybe, maybe about 250 on the original characters. I'm probably, probably another 250. Uh, yeah, it was at least like 500 pages altogether. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, the two, it was a lot of pages. It was a lot of words. I mean, that's that's pretty damn incredible. Yeah. I mean, um, so the really interesting thing about that is I feel very fulfilled about all of those characters because I spent a long time with them. I didn't spend time with them in a game per se, um, but I spent a long time with them in words. But that's the whole great. point, right? Like the the thing yeah. about the thing about writing some fiction. Now you did it collaboratively w- with with a friend, but you could write the fiction by yourself, yeah, right? So absolutely. that is a way to experience the character without having to, um, without having to have a game, a game group, or anything to yeah, help there, facilitate it. There weren't any mechanics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you could just tell a story that you wanted to tell about this character. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, the next one is um, recycle, reuse, right? The next one is you can adapt your idea and plunk it into a new game. Yeah, absolutely you can. Right? So you could, <laughs> if you had a character that you love that you never got to quite play, you could make a new character similar to that. Um, you can use, you know, the techniques that we've talked about on the show, right? Which is like kind of look at like what tropes or characteristics about the character seem interesting extract those out, reskin them to fit the new game setting, etc. So, you know, in this case, like for me, for my um, Numenera game, my, um, what you call it? My um, paladin, right? My cyborg paladin concept could be a warforged paladin in an Ebron game. Mm-hmm. Right. Very like could very easily just be a Warforged Paladin or just a regular Paladin. But I really like the idea that if I was playing Ebron for that case, I would do a Warforged. Right. Like, yeah, um, because also Warforges were made like for the war and stuff like that and not really understood like how they were made and stuff like I would totally do Warforged Paladin. Um, But that but that idea is, again, I took kind of those tropes, right? The the human but not like humanoid, but not human the like technology fused together kind of thing. Um, the trappings that work, f- you know, and then having the purpose as like a knight defender or whatever, take that over to D and D and like war forge is a cool fit for that. Um, and really if I was like, if, if I had a, if I had a DM that was kind of into um, a little bit of house ruling, partial war forge, would yeah, be pretty baller. That would be but the th- way. But, but expecting that my DM probably would know better than to let me try to whip <laughs> up something like that, I would just accept Warforge. And then Protector, like I could totally be a paladin, right? Like that would totally work in one. It would work uh, It would work great in the um, concept of a uh, Eberron game. Yeah. So you can absolutely recycle those things. You can absolutely recycle campaign ideas um, and get them off the ground. I will just say this as an aside, quick sidebar. Um, one of the things when I am working on a new campaign is that I actually don't go overboard writing the big campaign arc until the fourth yep, session. Yep, the fourth session. Yep. I always write a little something that's lighter and that's kind of like lead in material in the first couple sessions to make sure that everything's going to work great for the game. This way, I have not spent all my ideas. And if the game fizzles because it's just not a good fit or, you know, we hit any of those other problems we talked about, that campaign idea is still fresh and I'll just take it somewhere else yep. like and, and use it in a different game. Also, I haven't spent a lot of time like writing pages upon pages of campaign ideas only for everybody to now want to play the new shiny game that somebody brings back from convention. Yes. Right. So um, I just personally and if, if anyone wants to know more about that, I'm happy to talk about my four session rule. Um, as like, you know, as either a grab bag or as part of a show, but, um, I, I have actually over... talked about it, but I can't remember if we've spent an actual show on it. I don't know if we've ever unpacked the whole thing behind mm-hmm. it, but if we ever, if anyone's ever curious about that, I'll, I'll happily talk about it. It is a rule that I've used for over a decade. 
Um, the four session rule is um, kind of my North star for gaming in terms of um, how I kind of start campaigns, how I know if a campaign is going to be any good, all of those things. All right. Anyway, um, tell me the last one. Cause the last one is also pertinent to your <laughs> pandemic experience. It um, very much is. You can totally go back and use your character idea um, for a solo game of some sort. Um, whether that ends up being a, I feel like I have to define that. Whether that ends up being a solo game like me, myself, and I, I play by myself, or whether that ends up being a solo solo game, as in like, hey Phil, will you run me Legacy Weapon? And I'm I really want to. I'm really excited about the concept of this character that I have that I really really like to run through like a story, right? Um, so solo game in either of those senses would work, but if you just need to sit down and make this game happen by yourself because it's not going to happen with your group, then finding some sort of solo game, um, where you can kind of, uh, you know, work within that framework or reactions is uh, a cool way to do it. I will say, um, like... I was saying the fiction that I was writing with when um, there were vampires involved. They were our bad guys were vampires. Um, and because this all sprouted out of a monster of the weekend. Um, and uh, and so when I sat down and started playing by myself, thousand year old vampire, um, I ended up relating the character that I was creating to one of the characters in the stories because that was just cool to me, right? So, like, I didn't do it with the same one. I could have done it with the, the same character, but instead I wanted to make her someone who, like, you know, was related to that character. Um, and that was very fun and cool to me to just, like, wrap it in and reprise that a little bit. Mm -hmm. For example. <laughs> a absolutely. It does yeah. have to be the right solo game to make that work, right? Like, so this lined up for me because it was vampires and then I played a vampire journaling game, right? Like, that lined up. So, you know, you may need to pick the solo game to work with the character that you want to reprise or be connected with, right? Just yep. just to make that super duper clear, right? Like, not everyone is going to work for every game. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it, that one, I mean, it's a harder one, but I wanted to mention it because it is still it's cool. possible. Yeah, it's still cool. It's still possible. Um, and, it, and, it's, and it's different from writing fiction because you have some mechanics that you are engaging. Yes. Um, that are kind of driving things along. So it's, you know, with fiction, I, it's just like, hey, I'm going to tell the story about a character. I'm telling the story. This is what happened. I get to decide when what happens. Yeah. Right. When you're playing a solo game, it's like, I'm telling the story of this character, but from time to time, the game is pushing me into things. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, at this point, uh, my, my, uh, my character in the thousand year old vampire is currently hunting down the other va vampire character to consume her utterly and murder her. Um, so yes, the game has pushed me in that direction. <laughs> I mean, seems pretty vampire to me. It is very vampire. Um, yeah, it's great. And it was it was a very interesting story that got me there. <laughs> I bounced around through a bunch of prompts like a ping pong ball uh, for a little bit. And it ended up having some very interesting results. Um, I'm immune to the sun now and I'm hunting her. <laughs> nice job, Daywalker. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right. Well, with that, when our vampires reach daylight, um, it must be time for us to end the show. And in order for us to get to the end of the show, we need to talk about another show on the Misdirected Mark Network. Do you have one in mind? I sure do. On the lounge, Doc finds the best, the brightest, the most fun game designers and sits down to have a cool chat with them. You never know what conversation is going to come up in the lounge. Excellent. Say, Senda, where do people find us on the internet? Well, you can find us on Twitter at Pandas Talk Games. You can find us in the Misdirected Mark forums, which is forums.misdirectedmark.com. You can drop us an email, panda at misdirectedmark.com, or you can find us on the Tiki Talkies, <laughs> my latest favorite, um, where we have the same handles as our Twitter handles. And Phil, once they find us in one of those places, what can they do with that information? You can, um, like Andrew did in our Slack room, you can uh, toss us a question, make a request for us to do a show about something. Man, we love it. I I can't even express to you like how like I got to tell you that I think this show would have only been two seasons if I was forced to come up with all the topics for the show. I know, right? I think like I think within two seasons I'd have been like, "Ep, eh, I'm done. Yeah. Like we're out." But like I love when people just ask like, "Hey, would you guys talk about X?" Right? Would you give us some insight on X? Like, I just love it. So um, please just 
keep sending them. Like you can send a full on question. You can send us just a, a general topic. You can send us like, Hey, can you talk about from the GM point of view and player point of view, X, Y, Z, like whatever, like we're like, once we get going, it's really hard to shut us up. So, <laughs> um, all we need is just a little bit of push in, in a terms direction. of a topic yeah. and we are off and running. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, just do those things. Um, because boy, it's way more fun when we do a show about the things you want than when we sit around and be like, I don't know what do you want to talk about. <laughs> like, um, let's admit it. We don't actually do that very often. No, we because don't. We have because these you guys are wonderful right. topics from all of you. Amazing people. <laughs> it is very rare that we have to come up with our own topic. Like yes. you guys do such a good it's job. Great. <laughs> that most times we don't even have to do this. So anyway, please keep it coming. Um, you are uh, one uh, making us excited about talking about stuff that we didn't think about. And two, you're literally keeping the show alive. Yeah, you're doing okay. it. <laughs> you're doing it. Uh, if you like what we do, what we do here elsewhere on the Misdirected Mark Network, please consider supporting our Patreon campaign. Go to patreon.com slash MMP. Patrons of the show get access to the Bamboo Lounge, which is the nonsense that happens at the end of this show. Uh, the after show from the Misdirected Mark, you get access to the Slack Room for Life, where you could also leave us ideas for shows, uh, as well as talk to all the great humans that hang out in our Slack community. Um, come check us out on Fridays for our Friday luncheons. We're all there. You can kind of you can see like you can see us as humans, right, with faces I mean, it, and everything. It will require you to watch me eat my lunch, <laughs> but. Um, but mostly I do that off camera, kind of like lean off camera, stuff my face and then come back kind of thing. So you don't actually have to watch me like actually eat it, but I'm going to be eating my it is, standard it is takeout a luncheon. Chinese meal every Friday. It is a luncheon. Yeah. It is a luncheon. Lunch in. Bring your lunch. All Bring right. Anyway, lunch. Um, all of those things. Uh, many more things to come when the uh, as as the world comes out of the pandemic and we kind of spin back up our publishing arm and all that stuff there'll be more stuff there'll be i i swear there'll be some alphas for some new <laughs> games there'll be some other stuff uh that we're cooking up um all of it just got kind of frozen during pandemic it's all coming back there's a cool right. thing if you didn't notice it last week on the patreon from alpha stream um and you can also go sign up for his newsletter and stuffs um yep. but there's a cool thing already there so yeah, and we'll happening. be doing those things too. Yep. I got, I, like I said, I got some ideas. Uh, anyway, uh, if you're already backing the show, thank you very much. If you're unable to back the show, we totally understand. There is another thing you can do. We really need help uh, getting people to uh, find out and hear about the show. We're going to tell you about the thing you can do to help strangers uh, in a moment. And you already know what it is. If you listen to any of these shows, you know what it is. But I really want to emphasize that um, we definitely get great feedback when uh, you all recommend us on social media and stuff. And it's great. And we're super flattered. Um, and we're not going to ask you to do it. Um, but just if people ask, like if you see those things where people are like, what's your favorite you know, podcast or whatever, and you feel inclined to put us down, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you tag you know, the show's twitter handle we actually you know we definitely see it um and we you know greatly appreciate it and it's great like we've had many people who've joined up because of they've like they've you know asked that question on twitter or something and people have responded with our show and you know we jokingly say if you listen to us you will love us we hope that's true um but the way that works is if we can get people to listen and we get people to listen when you guys go out and tell people um that you have a cool our uh, you know tabletop rpg show that uh people should be listening to now, what is the uh, cold and inhuman thing <laughs> that they can also do that helps us find absolute strangers through algorithms and things like that? Well, you can leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or the podcatcher of your choice because new reviews tell strangers that we're cool and also make the algorithms do things, which is what we want them to do. We want them to make us go higher into the top part, which is great. Um, thank you so very much to everybody who's already left us a review. We super duper love reading them. If you left a review somewhere that you don't think that I might have seen it, you should let me know because I will go read it and have happy, warm feelings and I will send it to Phil and it will be great. Anyway, thank you so very much to everybody who's already left a review. We really, really do appreciate them. Say, Senda, 
show me where you think that character sheet might be for Legacy Weapon. Oh, boy. This show is a joint production of She's a Super Geek and Misdirected Mark Productions, the media arm of Encoded Designs. Show me what you got. Hey, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Hey, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Hey, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Click, click, click. Hello. One mic adjustment. Um, yes, I'm like, go. my audio seems to be a little low, actually. So I'm just gonna rip, rip. Um, hello, hello. Now that, you, now that you said that, I'm gonna check mine real quick. No, mine's good. <laughs> <sighs> oh, that's no wonder it's not doing a thing. Wrong slider. Okay, now, now we're good. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. All righty. <laughs> get ready. Get a pen. D- yes. There you go. <laughs> it's an apple pencil. Does that count? Bloop. Do do. do. Do 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 do